Hey, today on GC Talks, we're going to talk about showing ownership as a leader. I'm David Villa, and I'm looking forward to bringing this episode to you. Stay tuned. As business owners, entrepreneurs, and leaders in the kingdom of God, the concept of ownership transcends mere responsibility. It embodies a mindset that encompasses stewardship, accountability, and a commitment to excellence. In this podcast today, we're going to explore five key points on how to show ownership in our roles, both in the marketplace and in our spiritual calling. All right, let's look at the five key points. Point number one, embrace responsibilities. We're going to put some scriptures on the screen here for you to reference, but Matthew 25, verse 14 through 30 you're familiar with the parable of the talents. In this parable, the servants were given talents by the master as the master went on a journey. And you know the story, but in this story, these servants were stewards of these talents, these responsibilities, these resources. And they all did different things with them. Two of the servants invested these and increased them and even doubled them. And then one of them, out of fear, of losing the responsibility or losing the resources, buried it into the ground. And so just as the servants were entrusted with these talents, we are entrusted with resources, people, and opportunities. There's three things, resources, people, and opportunities. So showing ownership means taking full responsibility for what we have been given. It involves not only managing well, but also innovating and improving on what we have. So the application of this is we have to evaluate our current projects and initiatives. And we have to decide and look at how we can take greater responsibilities for their outcomes, not just throw them out there to the wind, not just bury them, not just you know put them out there and, and cross our fingers and hope that they're gonna just play out. But true ownership inc- requires steps that can take, that we can take to ensure that we're being a good steward of those resources. Uh, point number two, lead by example. And the scripture reference here is in 1 Timothy 4.12. And it, it, it requires you and I to set an example for other believers. Ownership is just that. A leader without a follower is just taking a walk. So ownership and leadership means that we model the behavior and values that we wish to see in our team. When leaders exhibit integrity and diligence and a strong work ethic, we inspire those around us to do the same. So I want to challenge us to identify one area. You know, the way we start, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Instead of, you know, listening to this podcast and then finding the gaps that are there and just rehauling everything and throwing everything into a tailspin, start by identifying one area where you can lead by example this week. Perhaps it's improving communication. Maybe it's being punctual. Maybe it's investing time into various personal development with your team but find one area that you can improve upon and show ownership better this week. Start eating the elephant one bite at a time. The next point is cultivate a culture of accountability. You know, I always, when I talk about culture, I always point out that there's a culture that's taking place in your company, in your ministry. There's a culture that's taking place wherever you are, in your family. And my question is, if there's a culture Who's driving that culture? If us as leaders are not taking ownership or showing ownership, there's a culture, but that culture is being driven by someone or something other than us. And the scripture here is Proverbs 27, 17. We're familiar with the scripture. It says, if, it says, iron sharpens iron. And, you know, we quote the scripture a lot in men's groups. We quote the scripture a lot in, in leadership. But really, if you look at it, there's only one way to sharpen iron, and that is when it comes into contact with other forms of iron. So ownership thrives in an environment of accountability. We have to encourage our team to take ownership of their roles and hold each other accountable for performance and behavior. My experience in dealing with people that desire to be successful is they crave accountability. They don't crave micromanagement, but they crave accountability. Anyone that's wanting to get from point A to point B or move to the next level they know truly as a person of success or excellence that that comes through true accountability of their performance and their behavior. And by doing this, we create a supportive atmosphere where everyone grows together. So 
Let's challenge one another this week and let's start by implementing regular feedback sessions where team members can share successes and challenges. Listen, we as leaders, sometimes we don't like to hear challenges. We, we view these maybe as weaknesses, but if you open up an area of collaboration and an area of feedback, then not only can you share in the successes, but also the challenges. And then do this by encouraging open dialogue about accountability. Fourth point, be proactive, not reactive. In James 2.17, it talks about faith by itself. If it is not accompanied by action, is dead. And this is a big one because we have faith, we believe, but are we putting action behind that faith? Because really true faith requires action. And showing ownership means anticipating challenges and addressing them before they become problems. It's it's about being proactive in decision-making and proactive in strategic planning. So this week, I'm gonna challenge you, take time to assess potential challenges that your business, your ministry, your family may face. Create an action plan to mitigate these risks and discuss them with your team. The next point is serve others with a heart of stewardship. Mark 10, 45 talks about Jesus, the Son of Man. He didn't come to be served, but to serve. So if you can really pattern your leadership after anyone, it would be Christ. But Christ, who is part of the Trinity, part of the Godhead, I mean, rightfully had a seat in heaven and is there now at the right hand of the Father, you know, left his place, left, if anybody could demand allegiance, it would be him. And eventually the Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, and there'll be a time where that allegiance is is there from everyone and that acknowledgement is there as Jesus, the Son of God. But the Son of Man didn't come initially to be served, but to serve. And so the lesson here in this, in this point is true ownership involves serving others. As leaders, we have to prioritize the needs of our team, the needs of our customers, and the needs of our community or those that we influence. And this stewardship not only builds trust, but it also reflects the heart of Christ in our leadership. And so here's an application for that, something we can apply today. We have to identify. Identify someone in your team someone in in the area or your sphere of influence or your community who could use your support and take intentional steps to serve them this week. All right, what does it mean to show ownership and leadership? Stewardship. Understand that everything we have is a gift from God. Showing ownership means recognizing our role as stewards who are accountable for our actions and decisions. And we have to manage our resources wisely, whether they're finances, time, or talent. You've heard it this way, time, talent, treasure. Secondly, accountability. Leaders must hold themselves and their teams accountable for results. It's essential to foster a culture where feedback is welcome and mistakes are viewed as opportunities for growth rather than failures. How can we get better together? Thirdly, vision alignment. Showing ownership involves aligning the vision of the business with the mission of God's kingdom. Ensure that your business practices reflect kingdom values and they serve a higher purpose, contributing to positivity uh, to society as a whole, to your customers, to your client base, to your, to your employees. Continuous improvement. This is a big one. Progress is the key, right? Not perfection, but progress. Ownership means committing to lifelong learning and growth. This isn't a sprint. This is a marathon. If your vision's big, it's going to take time, but we should always be striving pro- for progression. Leaders should consistently seek new knowledge, new skills, new insights, designed to enhance our effectiveness and the success of our organization. And lastly, empowerment. True ownership includes empowering others to take charge of their responsibilities. You know, don't assume somebody that works for you knows. They may know, have a perfunctory knowledge of their role, but have you empowered them? Have you sat down and said, I trust you? You know, listen, I believe in your ability to make this decision. I trust you, go with it. A leader who shows ownership invests in their team and provides them with the tools, the training, and most importantly, the support they need to succeed. So today, as we reflect on the concept of ownership in our leadership roles, let us remember that our ultimate example is by Christ. By embracing responsibility, leading by example, fostering accountability, being proactive and serving others, we can reflect His heart and impact our businesses, our ministries, our communities for the kingdom of God. So today, may we take these principles to heart and continually strive to show ownership in all aspects of our leadership. Hope you guys enjoyed this podcast today. I look forward to the next episode. We're going to talk about loyalty to the vision as a leader. Have a great day.